And around 4 p.m., I suddenly got kicked out of Slack, then removed from GitHub, and then kicked out of my email. In my head, I'm like, no way. This isn't happening the way I think it's happening. Well, guys, there's no easy way to tell you this. This is how we started. The CEO started. Man, to add the insult to injury for me, I had literally just finished transitioning back to my previous task. And right when I finished the thing that I had been working so hard on, they dropped me. So around four months ago, things took a turn for the company. A significant drop in revenue correlated with a decline in measured user traffic, events, and data collection. Our return on the company's ad spending for like their marketing campaigns took a nosedive, meaning that essentially our marketing efforts weren't practical anymore, and we weren't making enough money. We as a team deduced that this was due to the remaining like iOS users disabling ad tracking, you know, with the advent of iOS 14, uh, but no one was entirely sure the direct cause of the sudden change. From that point forward, the priorities of the CEO and thus our team changed. As a result, I got tasked with investigating whatever related technical issues I could find between our web and mobile applications and the connected advertising platforms. For the last three months, I was conducting independent research. I was tracking and comparing metrics, analytics. I implemented monitoring changes across the mobile and web apps, uh, recorded the results, rinsed and repeated. I was solid away from my typical developer flow as the new hand of the CEO address, addressing whatever he saw fit and necessary at the time. One of the reasons I ended up joining this company, I believe that because it was a smaller company and this was a little bit earlier in their in their growth, that I would be, pre be presented with the opportunity to have a high impact on the trajectory of the company itself, right? So I'm somebody who has a lot of passion, has a lot of drive, and has a wide you know breadth of ability in terms of like my skill set that I believe I can use to drive high impact in a specific category or you know a specific area and I've just been looking for the opportunity to apply that every company I've ever worked for even since I started working back in high school I've had the drive to want to climb the ranks in a sense or show that you know I have what it takes to manage a team or to help make a lot of those decisions that will drive growth. And I really thought that I would be able to have that ability or that opportunity here at this company. One of the things that I would do is try and look for opportunities to take initiative to expand my sphere of influence and to see if there was a particular part of the company or scope of work that I could take ownership over and have a, like a real impact on. I had a lot of side quests going on. So essentially, aside from my typical tasks that I would always give priority and complete first, I also took the initiative to try and get to know different parts or different people in different departments in the company. So like I said, the company itself was fairly small. There was only like 35 to 40 people. Amongst the different departments, I tried my best to try and go around and get to know people and learn what they did and get a general sense of the makeup of the company because there was no real organizational chart or anything like that. So every week I would uh, go on Slack, start looking around, read through some of the messages to try and get a sense of who was what and what they did. and I would reach out to them. I reach out to different people in different departments and just talk, introduce myself and see if there was any areas that, you know, they were struggling with within their own scope of influence or scope of work that I as a developer or just a general general problem solver could help alleviate or help, you know, improve. So the way I would frame it is, you know, I would open up a conversation with somebody and introducing myself like, hey, you know, my name is Joel. I'm over on the dev team. Our teams don't typically communicate on a regular basis, but I was hoping that I could introduce myself, get to know you, get to know, you know, some different people in the company. And one of the things I'm trying to do is see if there are any pain points or any areas of your job that you find are a struggle to deal with right now that someone like me could possibly help alleviate and I ended up learning a lot of things about the company that way I found that there were a lot of different areas of the company that lacked an organization that had no systems or processes and there was a lot of uh, wasted time money and effort in a lot of different areas be it shipping and fulfilling be it the marketing side um, advertising like the whole nine there was always a lot of issues in a lot of different areas and I got it would get excited because I saw all these different areas of opportunity right that I could try and and uh, jump into without while still being cognizant of the fact that I'm a developer like in no way did I want to step on anybody else's toes so I still moved with a lot of tact but at the same time I found that there were a lot of areas of opportunity for the company that I thought would be a possibility for me to you know 
generate some type of rapport and impact in. I ended up uncovering a far more extensive and more complex issue that the company was dealing with, which unsurprisingly followed an evident pattern in many other areas throughout the company. There was a severe lack of strategy, relative expertise, and communication between the applications, the ad platforms, and the bridges that connected them. To put it simply, YesFit had most, if not all of its eggs in one basket, Facebook ads. For a long time, Facebook ads were so good that even a less optimized tracking setup or a less appealing ad set would still print money if you spent enough. But when we stopped getting data from most of our iPhone users, Facebook ads stopped being a money printer for YesFit. We needed to figure out a new campaign strategy and fast. I ended up presenting my findings to the CEO and the dev team, which transitioned us into the next phase of implementing a solution to solve the more significant problem. Fast forward three months later, and I was finishing up the, you know, polishing the implementation of this solution, effectively unifying our customer data collection by integrating some new tools and services, enriching the information fed to our ad platforms like Facebook ads and Google ads, and metaphorically bandaging many of the 1,000 cuts that the company was bleeding from. The day I completed that project, I actually had a one-on-one -on -one schedule with my boss, and we chopped it up for a bit before getting into our typical routine of asking each other questions about morale and how we've been feeling about the tasks we've been working on. We even briefly laughed about the fact that I was, was scheduled last for our one-on-ones because they were always the longest. It was always a two-way conversation with me instead of the typical one-sided script, and he appreciated that. I remember asking him as I normally would if he had any feedback for me at the time and if I was performing you know, below, at, or above uh, his expectations. He assured me that I was doing great and I had been consistently performing above expectations. So the next day we had stand up as usual. I got instructed to resume the task that I was working on before we had actually switched the initiative. And around 4 p.m., I suddenly got kicked out of Slack, then removed from GitHub, and then kicked out of my email. Imagine like on my ultra wide screen, which I usually have all of these different windows open at once, suddenly displaying a bunch of errors and notices of being forcibly, forcibly logged out and removed from different organizations. I knew what was happening in my head, but I tried to hold my composure and began to troubleshoot, you know, all the different platforms. So I was suddenly reinvited to Slack, after which I immediately pinged the rest of the dev team asking for clarification on like what was happening at the moment. And one of my teammates even responded back saying that he was experiencing a similar situation. Then we both received a ping from our product manager with a Zoom link. In my head, I'm like, no way. This isn't happening the way I think it's happening. So I ended up joining the call and in it were the product manager, the CEO, one of my dev teammates and a business admin who was uh, also part of our team. Well guys, there's no easy way to tell you this, just how we started, the CEO started, before delivering the news. We all got laid off with no severance, no PTO payout, no prior notice, and no dignity. Honestly, I'm not even upset with the reason behind why I got laid off. These are things that are possible when you're working at a startup or a smaller company. Things happen. During his deliverance of the news, the CEO made it clear that it had nothing to do with our performance or our behavior as individuals. It was just an unfortunate reality that they couldn't afford us going forward. So the BA in the meeting ended up asking him, how long have he been considering this? Uh, because up until this point, none of us had any idea or any notion that our job security would be at risk. We've seen patterns like this before and how the company handles hiring a bunch of people and then laying off a couple people, but we were always under the impression that the dev team was solid um, and the, or the product team was solid. And you know, this was even something that my direct boss, the CTO believed as well. So when the CEO just uh, answered him, he said that he had been considering this for the last four weeks. So when I heard that, I got really angry I held my composure, but I had to speak up and I asked him directly. I was like, wait a second. So let me under let me make sure I'm understanding this right. You have been considering this for the last four weeks, for the last month or more. And you didn't think to give any of us any notice or consideration that this is the direction that the company was heading, especially with the fact that we were going above and beyond to produce a solution to fix this problem in the first place. You didn't think to give us the, the courtesy or the consideration to help us prepare just in case this ended up going, getting to this point. And he was like, well, 
you see, I, I, I wanted to hold out. I was hoping that we would be able to fix it in time. I was waiting up to the last day, and I just thought that, you know, all these different bullets would do it, this, that, and the other, and we just didn't, we just didn't hit the mark. And I'm thinking to myself, like, I even made it clear multiple times that this wasn't something that was going to be fixed overnight because it was a overarching issue that stemmed from way before I had even joined. And in every phase of this project, from research to ideation to implementation, I was going as far as like, I created reports detailing the problem, the potential solutions, roadmaps, and what I thought was necessary to fix the whole issue. And never did I mention, in fact, I made it clear to mention that it was a, it was a complex issue and it was something that was going to take time because the thing about data, it doesn't materialize instantly especially when you're using for like, you know, marketing campaigns or, you know, uh, making decisions and you're collecting that information, you have to wait for that to accumulate, right? So the fact that he waited this long or the team waited this long to uh, break the news the day of, and man, to add the insult to injury for me, what, what really got me is like the only thing I could think about in that moment when I was so like enraged was the fact that I had literally just finished the final like pieces of like polishing the final things to connect the last couple dots together. And I was literally just transitioning back to my previous task. And right when I finished the thing that I had been working so hard on, they dropped me. And again, it's not even about the fact that they had to lay people off. I you know, that part I can understand, but the fact that you didn't think that it would be worth giving the employees you claim to care so much about, you know, that you've preached this idea, this notion that we all have a voice and we all are a big team and a family and we're working together to, to make this, you know, the mission to accomplish the mission of the company. The fact that you didn't think to give that it was worth giving them any notice to prepare, even if that's the direction that the company was going that really upset me because in my mind that tells me that you don't believe that we matter you don't believe that we have that our lives or that our secret situations and circumstances that you have no idea about terrible you don't know how many of them are living check to check how many people have bills to pay none of that but you decided that not only were you not going to give them any notice there was no severance there was no pto payout i had 80 hours of accrued pto they weren't going to give me none of it and that goes for all of them. I was like, you're telling me like you, you can't do anything? We just can't afford it. And I'm like, there's no way. You can't tell me that you can't afford it because I literally spent the last three months in looking at the company's metrics. I see how much money we're making. I saw how much money we were spending. And I know the company wasn't going to die in the next two days. So for me, that excuse was BS. And I didn't appreciate that. And I felt really disrespected. I felt really disgusted with the 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 execution of that and the deliverance of that. And honestly, man, I mean, I can look at things objectively, uh, especially from a business standpoint and think that, you know, if companies, you know, sinking, you gotta, you know, trim the fat. In his mind, he was like, oh, I had to cut the developer salaries because y'all are the most expensive. I'm like, well, we directly are, we're the ones that are directly responsible for creating the products that are making you money in the first place. And it's not our fault that the marketing team isn't effective or that your ad campaign strategy isn't affected. I literally went through the process of creating a specialized detailed report on a re my recommendation of a more optimal marketing campaign management system and strategy. Like a whole, uh, I created a whole document laying out, I built a cu like customer journeys, different campaign strategies for each phase in that journey to make it simple. Cause my thought process is if I build this system out, he should be able to give it to anybody else in the marketing team and delegate that task. And they should be able to make the right decision if I build this right. So I went through that effort, not just because it wasn't as simple as, hey, we need to accomplish this task because I understood the gravity of the situation and I understood how important the problem was. And I wanted to make sure that I didn't just solve it here. I solved the other side of it that's related to it, right? So, I mean, for me, I was just uh, really taken aback and really disappointed that this this is how they operated. And there were a lot of companies like that that are that are, were just cutthroat like that, you know what I mean? And unfor like honestly, I didn't think this was one, but, I learned better. So I have a few lessons that I learned from this experience, some things that I took away that I wanna be able to share with you guys. I'm gonna drop that in the next part of the video so that way you have one video that's dedicated specifically to the different things I learned throughout my entire employment at YesFit. So that way, again, if unfortunately you end up experiencing something similar, I want you to be at least a little bit more prepared than I was.
I was banking on the company and I was banking on my job security for a few things and I made the wrong choice. And it's not necessarily my fault because I couldn't see this was coming and I was, you know, I naively believed the words of other people around me that, hey, the dev team was always safe. But I know better now and I want you to know better. So tune into that next video if you're ready. I might already have it uploaded. Check it out because I really want to make sure that you don't go through what I went through.